Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to Shada Crop Camp Q1 FY25 conference call hosted by Antic Stock Broking. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on your touchtone phone. Please note that this conference is been recorded. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Manish Mahavar from Antique Stock Broking. Thank you and over to you, sir. Thank you. On behalf of Antique Stock Broking, warm welcome to all the participants on the 1Q FI25 earnings call of Sharda Cropcan. Today we have Mr. R.V. Bhubna, Chairman and Managing Director, Mr. Salish Mahandale, CFO, and Mr. Dinesh Shah, GM Finance on the call. Without any delay, I would like to hand over the call to Mr. Bhubna for opening remarks. Post which we will open the floor for Q&A. Thank you and over to Mr. Bhubna. Thank you, Manishji. Good afternoon and very warm welcome to everyone present on the call. Along with me, I have Mr. Sailesh Mahindale, our CFO, and Mr. Dinesh Nahar, General Manager Finance, and uh, our uh, SGS strategic uh, advisors are there on the uh, call also. Hope you all have received our investor deck by now. For those who have not, you can view them on the stock exchanges and company website. As you are aware, we are engaged in marketing and distribution of wide range of agrochemical products. That is herbicide, insecticide, fungicides and biocides. Catering to diverse global customer base. We prepare comprehensive dossiers and seek registrations in our, our own name. We allocate substantial resources and establish our foothold in the market. Our total product registration stood at uh, 2,928 as on 30th of June 2024. Additionally, 1,040 applications for product registrations globally are at the approval stage, or I would say they are in the pipeline. The capex for uh, Q125 stood at rupees 78 crores, and we expect the capex to be in the range of 400 to 450 crores for the full year. For Q1 FY25, the total revenue have grown by 23 percent to 785 crores with substantial volume growth of 41 percent year on year mainly through agrochemical segment with Europe nearly doubling and being major contributor to the Q1 FY25 revenue growth. Volumes from agrochemicals grew by 49% year on year and non agrochemicals degrew by 39% year on year. Gross, gross margins are at 29.2% and they have come back to normalcy. We expect this to improve in the financial year with the prices expected to increase. With this brief overview, I would now like to hand over the call to our CFO, Mr. Mahesh Mahindale, for discussing our financial performance. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Good afternoon, everyone. Coming to quarter one FY25 performance, revenue stood at rupees 785 crores in quarter one FY25 versus rupees 638 crores in quarter one FY24 with an increase of 23% year on year. Coming to the split, agrochemical business increased by 43% year on year to Rs. 679 crores in quarter 1 FY25, whereas the non-agrochemical business decreased by 35% year on year to Rs. 106 crore in quarter 1 FY25. Gross margin stood at 29.2% in quarter 1 FY25 as against 8.7% in quarter 1 FY24. EBITDA for the quarter stood at Rs. 88 crores with EBITDA 
margin at 11.3 percent as compared to a loss of rupees 66 crore in quarter one FY24. That for the quarter stood at rupees 27 crores as compared to loss of rupees 89 crores in quarter one FY24. Working capital days have also improved in last three months by 21 days and stand at 137 days as on 30th June 24. We remain net debt free company and have cash and liquid investments of Rs. 624 crores as on 30th June 24. We can now open the floor for the questions and answers. Thank you. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask question may press star and one on the touchdown telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. First question is from the line of Viraj from SIMPL. Please go ahead, sir. Yeah, am I audible? Hello? Yes, sir. Yeah, thanks for the opportunity. Just a couple of questions. One is on the Atkin business, you know, the volume growth in key end markets. Is it more due to channel refilling or, you know, given concerns on freight issues uh, we are seeing due to the Red Sea crisis? Or is it more driven by the consumption with secondary sales? See, the main factor has been uh, use of the Q stocks which was lying with the manufacturers and in the channel throughout the things. Those stocks are getting reduced and consumed and the operations are moving towards normalcy. So, can you give some color on inventory levels where we are now compared to a normal cycle? So, if you have to understand a normal cycle, are we still at the normal cycle, uh, normal levels, or we are even below that in terms of inventory? No, I would not say it is uh, below. It may be slightly more, but uh, it is difficult to give the figures because when I'm talking about the inventories, there are so many manufacturers globally, and uh, the figures are not available to us. No, I meant at the inventory in the channel, not at the manufacturing level. But the inventory that I mentioned was including the manufacturers as well as the channel. It is difficult to make a guess. We can only make an uh, uh, absolute, I mean, approximate uh, guess that the inventories have got consumed and they are still getting consumed. And in terms of demand, you know, what is your sense? Uh, you are getting across key markets like Europe or NAFTA. And I am looking this because in the annual report also you talked about growth to be driven by mix of volume and pricing power. So if you can elaborate, you know, what are we seeing incrementally in the market price, which will drive better pricing and volume? See, the demand has been very good. As we have mentioned to you, the volume of agrochemicals have grown up by uh, almost uh, 49% compared to the same quarter last year. And Europe has been the major and biggest contributor, Europe, uh, the demand in the quarter one has been almost double the demand in the uh, same period last year. Okay. And sir, in the Akim business, you know, if you look at our EBIT margin, you know, uh, despite such a healthy growth in sales, one would think margin should normalize to at least 6-7% in quarter one. So historically, we have done at least 5-6, five, 5-7% five to seven percent EBIT margin. Uh, in first quarter, but this quarter, you know, despite such a healthy growth in volume, our margins are quite low. So, was there any one-off or any further inventory provision? See, the margins are also dependent upon the price levels. Some products that we were selling at ninety dollars per gallon are being still sold at twenty dollars per gallon. So, last year, the company had to bear a very heavy loss by devaluation of the market prices. Now, the, the devaluation process has stopped. If we are selling at $20, they are also sourcing at 
maybe 17 or 18 dollars. Now the same product when it was, was say, being sold at 90 dollars, our sourcing price was about 70 to 75 dollars. So in terms of percentage, uh, absolute terms, the margins are still at a very low level. So but the spread or the percentage should be even higher if not same, right? Uh, because say on a $30 realization, the sourcing is $17. Uh, as again, say uh, 70, 75 on a $90 realization. So in percentage terms, actually margins will be, if not better, at least same as a normal cycle. No? I think you have not heard me properly. I did not say 30. I said 20. Okay. Okay. Selling at 20, uh, we are sourcing at 17 or 18 dollars. Okay. And on the other expenses, sir, what is driving such a sharp increase in other expenses? So last year also we had a very healthy base and there were some one-off expenses in Q1 last year. So, you know, what is driving the other expenses and how should we understand that for the rest of the year, both in the margin and growth? Sir, one is, uh, I would say, legal and professional fees. And second is uh, foreign exchange loss. How much is the foreign exchange loss? I don't understand. How much is the FX loss in this quarter? Uh, about uh, 8.31 crores. And this compares to how much of Q1 last year? Last year there was a gain of 9.5 crores. Okay, fine. I'll come back in queue. Thank you. Yes, please. Thank you. Our next question is from the line of Preet Malde from Bikerscape. Please go ahead. What is his name? Preet Malde. Hmm. Preet Malde. Uh, yeah. Hello, Mr. Bhubna. Uh, <clears throat> so I had a question. Uh, in the agrochemical prices, before the prices dropped so drastically, they had even climbed up uh, pretty high. So uh, as you're saying that some molecules that were $90, uh, you're selling it now for $20. Now what should uh, be uh, a ballpark figure that this would be considered as a normal pricing? So do you think that the normal pricing level is uh, now $90, which was um, before the price drop, or uh, is it somewhere around $50, $60? I'm just giving an example on the terms of the pricing example that you gave. See, $90, in my opinion, is too far. It right. will slowly, gradually go up, and uh, it also depends on many other factors, including the cost of raw materials, cost of manufacture, and all that. So it may, it may take uh, quite some time to reach up to $90, but it would go up to $30, $35, $40. Maybe by end of the year, it may go up to $40. Mm -hmm. It's it just a guess. Okay. Okay, makes sense. And uh, uh, you're saying that the inventories have started normalizing, the inventories are being refilled. Uh, so what is uh, still holding the prices down in these markets? So if the uh, general sense is that the market has normalized, so what is still holding the prices down? See, uh, the market share. Nobody wants to lose the market share. Okay. Understand. Market share is one of the important thing, important factors. <laughs> All right. And just one more question. Historically, we've seen that uh, Q4 has been pretty heavy for us. It's uh, good top lines, uh, good margins. So, do we see that trend continue? Yes, please. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Our next question is from the line of Ajas Lakhani from Unipris Capital. Please go ahead. Uh, thanks for the opportunity. I just wanted to understand the uh, the growth triggers on the non-agrochemical side. So uh, there has not been recovery in the non-agrochemical volume set. So how are we seeing the trend in that business? You see, in general, there is a uh, lack of a drop in the demands. 
and uh, one of the factors contributing to the lack of demand is high freight rates. The freight rates forms a substantial part of the goods here and because of this uh, rate sea disturbances and other things, both the rate as well as the time of travel is quite high. So that is leading to the lower uh, or uh, drop in the volumes as well as revenue. Got it. And on the agrochemical side, uh, are you already seeing the prices uh, improving or is is it an anticipation that the prices will improve in the coming quarters? See, the price will improve when the demand is more than the supply. Today, de uh, demand and supply is matching with each other and uh, people do not want to lose the market share. So people are not very keen to get better margins. They want to have the same market uh, volume, market share. This situation will change gradually and that's very normal and natural. Okay, sir. And sir, last on the our capex which we are doing or other the registration which we are doing. So historically, last few years we have been doing somewhere around 250 crore uh, annual registration. This year, the number you are guiding is 400, 450 crores. Uh, so can you give some sense what kind of opportunities you are seeing and uh, how do you see this uh, registration impacting our uh, a growth in the uh, coming years? Mr. Lakhani, you are not very well informed about the capex that we are spending in the last two, three years. You see, last year okay. we have spent 420 crores. Okay. In the previous year, 2022-23, uh, our capex was uh, 360 crores, but in 21-22, it was also 415 crores. So okay. for the last three years, we have been spending in the range of 400 to 420 crores. And this is going to be more or less uh, at the same level of slight improvement, uh, increase, compared to the average of last three years. Noted, sir. Okay, fine. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Our next question is from the line of Darshita from NT Proking. Please go ahead. Yeah, uh, thank you for the opportunity. Uh, the first question is regarding the FY25 guidance. We had given a 15 to 18% volume growth guidance with 15 to 18% EBITDA margin. Do we still retain that? Yes, please. Got it. Okay. Uh, my second question was regarding the higher inventory days that we have seen on YOY basis. Uh, what would uh, what would be the reason behind that? I have not understood your question very clearly, madam. I would request to speak a little louder. Okay, and, my. Uh, yes. Uh, I understand your question. Yeah, Bhubnaji, I was just saying that the inventory days has increased on YOY basis from 85 days to 103 days. So I just wanted to understand the reason behind the increase. Madam, this increase is not very uh, substantial or abnormal. This is a part of the normal uh, business operations. And uh, there are many factors, but I cannot uh, pinpoint what is the exact factor which is leading to. But I think the inventory level is fairly normal. Got it. Okay. Uh, thirdly, on the pricing front, on uh, if we were to look at the volume number uh, uh, for the agrochemical business, what we can see is that on sequential basis, the pricing has improved. So is that the case from fourth quarter to first quarter? Has the pricing improved or is there some benefit of better product mix in the agrochemical business? Madam, the pricing have improved very uh, marginally, not very much compared to the Q4 last year and this year. But the trend is on the improvement because uh, even the manufacturers are very unhappy with the current prices and uh, on every given opportunity they li like to have better prices. Their margins are almost uh, zero. Got it. And um... 
the next question was largely on this if if any sales returns abnormal sales return we have seen in the second quarter as of now no not so far okay uh, i want i had some okay the okay. year got it the last year was a very very abnormal situation otherwise sales returns have never been so exhaustive as it was there last year hmm got it uh if we can get the segmental uh, the reason why is volumes for the agrochemical business uh for q1 for first quarter yes yeah no for the first quarter yeah for the first quarter the reason why is agrochemical volumes yes in europe uh it is uh, something like 5 million units nafta region it's about 4 million units let them 0.6 million and rest of the world about 0.35 okay uh, can we get the region wise gross margins pardon me region wise gross margins yes uh, madam in europe the gross margin is about 35 to 30, 35.5% nafta region 22% latam 32% and rest of the world 38% and average overall it's about 31% got it um can we get get the region wise registration break up one minute yes please in europe the registrations are 1625 nafta 300 latam 750 and rest of the world 250 okay that was very helpful thank you so much for answering all the questions thank you madam thank you a next question is from the line of s ramesh from nirmal bank equities please go ahead sir um good morning and thank you very much for the call bhuna uh, ji so you talked about a very healthy volume growth yoy this quarter so can we uh, get an understanding of how this volume growth will compare if you were to take uh, it on uh, first quarter of fy 23 this two years ago because uh, last year was an abnormal year So we were to compare this volume on a normal year by 23. What would it be like? Uh, sir, this is a very unique question. That you want me to go back to the year before. Normally we come prepared uh, for the previous year. But give me two minutes. I try to search for it. Yeah. So just to understand how it works out on normal basis. Yeah. So you are asking about volume, no? Yeah, volume growth. Yeah. Sir, we don't have the figure for the uh, Q1. We have for the full year. Yeah, full year. That will be irrelevant then. <laughs> we don't have ready ready made information about Q1 of the previous year. I mean, previous to previous year. Okay. No. So no. If you were to assume this 49 percent kind of you know index extrapolated for the entire year. If you compare with full year of 523, what would it look like? Just to get a sense in terms of what would be the normalized volume growth you know, once things sit uh, stabilize. Sir, conservatively, we feel that there will be a volume growth of about 15 to 20 percent. Okay. Okay. So, and if you were to look at the uh, gross margins you have achieved, uh, it's a question of being able to ramp up your revenues. In my understanding, then you will be able to go back to normal. Um, Maybe the margins and perhaps improve your ROC. So if you were to, you know, look ahead, say over the next uh, four to eight quarters, um, what what is the you know best case you can take in terms of uh, when you would see uh, you know uh, the uh, some kind of discipline come back in terms of people trying to get market share and the excess supply coming down, and uh, when would you see pricing power improving and margins improving on a sustainable basis? Would it be say by Uh, the Jan March quarter next year, or would it be somewhere in the first half of uh, next year? When do you think that will happen? 
I would say Jan March of the next year. Jan March. So finally, if you're looking at your uh, capital expenditure, you know you've done about 1,200 crores of capital expenditure. So uh, if you were to, um, you know, take your asset base and look at a one-time asset turn, um, you should be able to do about 4,000 crores, right? So uh, if if prices don't fall, and with this 15-20 percent volume growth, you should, should would you be in a position to achieve this 4,000 crores revenue from the current base? So in the next uh, two to three years. Yes, please. Okay. Uh, thank you very much. I'll join with you and wish you all the best. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, a reminder to all participants: please limit your question to two per participant. Should have a follow-up question, we request you to rejoin the queue. Our next question is from the line of Bhavya Gandhi from Dala and Brocha Stock Broking. Please go ahead, sir. Yeah, thank you for the opportunity. So my first question is regarding the sales force. Uh, I see that the full year sales commission has been closer to four odd crores, uh, whereas our sales force is closer to 500 people in terms of number. So can you just throw some light? Uh, do we show it under some other expense as well? Sir, I have not understood your question. Can you please repeat what you are what you are saying and where did you get this? So in the annual report, we mentioned four and a half crores of commission, sales commission. Hello. One minute, sir. Let me see. Where are these figures? <coughs> Sorry, around 12 odd crores. 12 odd crores is the sales commission. When it when it comes to the total number of sales force, we have around 500 odd people, right? No, no, not that much. Our I would say our number of people should be in the range of over 350 to 400. Okay, 300 to uh, okay. And uh, do we show other uh, any commission or other expenses that we give to sales people under any other head? No, sometimes we give them some incentives. We set some targets, and if those targets are achieved, then we give them some kind of an incentives. Okay, and your total employees are 180 odd, 180 employees, right? Permanent employees. So where do you mark this five, uh, 350 odd sales force? They are categorized under which category? These are all our uh, team members outside India. This 180 are the team members who are in India and who are employed on the. Salary, employer-employee uh, relationship basis. Foreign countries, we do not hire those people on the employment basis, but we hire them as consultants or we engage them as consultants. You know, because in many countries there are a lot of complicated employee benefits and other things which we are difficult to predict and calculate and afford. Okay. Our uh, commissions payable is just related. to the sales volume that they generate and sometimes the commissions are also fixed but we know what is our commitment and liability got it let me just ask you some other in another way out of the 266 crore legal and professional fees how much would be the sales incentive or uh, what all things are included in the legal and professional fees no sir legal and professional fees fees do not include any of these incentives the incentives are there Only in the consultation charges and uh, professional fees. I mean, not legal. Uh, so, if you can help me understand, what is this 266 odd crores legal and professional fees for the full year FY24? One minute. You see, uh, I will give you a broad. I mean, I don't have the precise information. we are uh, engaged in the process of registering our products and uh, for the purpose of registrations also we require lot lot of legal uh, advice many times to negotiate our data compensation with the innovators and reply to the authorities on uh, many technical uh, and legal matters sometimes there are also some uh, arbitrations 
for which we have to hire the legal uh, professionals. So these are mainly to see that uh, we are following the law and nobody is accusing us for any violation of the law. Okay, okay, got it. Just one last thing. So uh, broadly, if we were to amount the total expenditure for those 350 sales force, how much would be the approximate number within the other expenses? So I would say it will be in the range of 100 to 105 crores. Okay, and that would be broadly under which uh, head? Under the head of legal and professional expenses, but then the subhead of the legal personnel is business development. Okay, got it. Okay, yeah, thank you so much. That's it. I'll get back in the queue. Okay. Thank you. Our next question is from the line of Archit from BNK. Uh, good afternoon, Bhubna ji. Thanks a lot for the opportunity. Uh, so my first question is on a comment you made earlier uh, with respect to uh, the Chinese manufacturers uh, still not happy with the selling price of uh, agrochemicals and the fact that they are hardly making any margins. Sir, what in your view are these uh, uh, external forces that are compelling them to uh, be non-profitable or very uh, marginally profitable and still do business? Uh, what is the situation in China uh, that is compelling this situation? So the biggest uh, factor is the question of survival. They all, they all want to survive and uh, they have uh, so, so, so much of our uh, manufacturing capacity and Chinese are competing with Chinese. You understand? All of them are struggling to survive and have some market share of the uh, share of the market. Uh, understood, sir. Uh, sir, a follow-up to the same one. Uh, uh, you earlier mentioned about uh, how the prices have collapsed and the cost of manufacturing also uh, uh, being a function of the final selling price. Would it be fair to assume that Chinese companies or Chinese manufacturers are still uh, uh, manufacturing these active ingredients at a much competitive price, which is why your customers still prefer China as a base uh, of procuring their uh, raw materials. And the distinct advantage that you have having presence in China through through our business model, uh, would that continue to stay? See, your question has been very long, but my answer is very brief. Yes, that will continue to stay. And uh, I carry an we carry an impression that China is a factory to the world today. All the developer, developing, con developed countries have stopped the process of manufacturing because of the cost and a lot of uh, regulations and controls, particularly related to environment and human health, which is not so uh, exhaustive in China and the developing countries. So because of the economic uh, reasons, most of the manufacturing has shifted to China. Understood, sir. Uh, thank you. Thanks for the uh, clarification. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Our next question is from the line of Dhara from Willyquist. Please go ahead. My question has been answered. Thank you. Hello. Hello. Am I audible? I can't. I can't understand. What is the question? Hello. Hello. Hello, sir. Sorry to interrupt. The line from the arm has been disconnected. Okay. Okay. Oh, I think she said my questions have been answered. Did she say so? So okay. she has no more questions. Okay, good. Our next question is from the line of Gautam from MBA Invest. Please go ahead, sir. Uh, thanks for the opportunity. Uh, just I would like to know that, like I can see, we are having high trade receivables, like more than 40-45%. So do you see any risk in that and what is the reason behind this? One minute. Let me see whether the facts that you said... 
Let me verify the facts. Uh, my friend, the trade receivables have gone down from uh, 192 days in the fourth quarter to 132 days in the first quarter of this year. So there is a lot of improvement. In the fourth quarter, the trade receivables are high because the sales volume in that quarter is very high. And now, slowly it is coming down to normal. Sorry. Do, uh, like we can expect that in the coming years trade receivables will come down like it's more than 40 percent annually coming quarters it will come down but coming years the trends would remain more or less the same because our business is a seasonal business and the maximum sales volume comes in the quarter four and uh, quarter four is always the highest amount of high uh, figure of trade receivables Okay, uh, so do you see any risk in this, like having high trade receivables? This is very normal, sir, and I don't see any risk. Okay, thank you, sir. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Our next question is from the line of Soyam Garg from Leder Finance Limited. Please go ahead, sir. Thanks for the opportunity, sir. Uh, most of my questions have been answered. So my first question is with respect to if you can give us a, a product margin uh, in each region in agro camp business. Product margin? Yes, product margin. I have, I have answered region. that question, uh, but I will uh, answer my repeat my answer once again. The gross margin in Europe has been around 35 to 36 percent. Uh, sir, uh, I am asking for a uh, product margin in agrochem business in each region, for example, pesticides, herbicides, and likewise. Oh, product margin figures I don't have. Okay. I don't have the product margin figures. Okay. And sir, uh, with respect to the what CAPEX we have done in the last three years, what has been the volume growth and margin in those products uh, in, in which we have received the registration uh, in the last three years compared to the existing products. Mr. Uh, what's your name? Dr. Uh, Shyam Garg. Dr. Shyam, your question is very unclear to me. You will have to uh, just uh, speak a little slowly and loudly so that I can understand the question. Sure, sir. Uh, so in the last three years, uh, we have done, uh, we have spent on registration. We have so done We have done, we have spent around 400 to 420 crores on registration of new product in different regions. Yes, please. So what, what has been the margin on those products compared to the uh, existing product that we had? And you see, the margin on recently registered products is always high compared to the margins on the existing products. And uh, it's a very simple answer to this. Uh, the process of registration is a continuous process and uh, we may be the second, third or fourth uh, regist generic registrant for a product, but over a period of time they can be five, six, eight, eight uh, generic registrants. So the competition increases and the margin shrinks. For the new products, uh, we could be second, third or fourth, so the competition is less and the margins are better. Okay, sir. So any, uh, for the last sir, year, if you can give us... Sir, sorry to interrupt, sir. Because several yeah. participants are waiting in the question queue, I request you to join the question sure, queue again. Sure. Thank you. Thank you for answering my question. Our next question is from the line of Raj from Arjun Partners. Please go ahead, sir. Hello, am I audible? Yes, sir. Yes, please. Out of total registration that that, that we have, it is around 2925, right? So how much of that generates to sales for us? How much of them are active? 
I would say about 80% of them are active. 80% of them are active out of 2925. Yes. All right. And sir, uh, could you please give a given outlook for FY25 and FY26 in terms of sales and in terms of EBITDA? FY25? I have already given, no? Yes, I actually so skipped the point on that. So can you please repeat? Increase by 15 to 18%. And yeah. EBITDA is going to improve also to around 15 to 18% compared to much lower or probably negative in some quarters last year. All right, all right. And so for FI26? What is that? And for FI26, can you provide an outlook? FI26 is uh, uh, too far. All right. So sir, your F FI25 and then go to FI26. Because and situations keep on changing. A lot of factors, it's a continuous uh, uh, moving situation, so there can be a lot of things and I, I, we do not like to make guesses. Understood, sir. So, sir, your FY24 EBITDA was 9.59% per percent. So, for FY25, can we expect an EBITDA of around 15% or so? Sir, I don't know whether you have been hearing me, I have repeated this question many times. We expect EBITDA to go up to 15 to 18%. In the current year, FY25. Okay. Thank you. All the best. Thank you. Thank you. Our next question is from the line of Chinmay from Prescrench Capital. Please go ahead, sir. Oh, hi, sir. Thank you for taking my question. A little general question from my side for the uh, oversupply issue and the return of inventories that happened last year. You said that uh, it was a rather unprecedented event. Uh, now that things are reviving, are we are we making any efforts or are we doing something on a more structural level um, or maybe in terms of our contracts with customers or maybe sourcing to insulate ourselves better from um, such shocks going in uh, in future? Is there is there any scope for any such thing? Just like, would like some color on this. Your name is Mr. Shinmay. Yes. Mr. Shinmay, we cannot make our own rules in the market. We have to still uh, survive and continue and we have to follow the uh, stream and the way the stream is moving. And uh, if we like to be unique, then we'll, we'll have to go out of the market. Even the multinational companies have all the uh, innovator companies have accepted those things, return of the market and giving them longer credit and other things. And we cannot be alone. We have no uh, such special qualities or situation that we can form our own rules. Got it, sir. Understood. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Our next question is from the line of Paras Edinwala from Capital Portfolio Advisors. Please go ahead, sir. Yes, uh, I heard you mention that uh, over the last uh, three years, you spent on an average about uh, 200 crores per year for KPEX. Would it be, um, uh, you know, um, would it be fair to conclude that a large part of that would be for registration of your products uh, rather than KPEX because yours is an asset-like business? Sir, most of, I think most of our uh, capex is for registration of the products. We are not investing or uh, I mean spending any capital on acquiring or building up tangible assets. Okay. All these are only for uh, uh, acquiring the intangible assets, which are registrations. Okay, and uh, so uh, since uh, last year was a uh, challenging year, uh, would it be fair to say that? Uh, over um, um, FI25 or maybe FI26, we will uh, definitely return back to your um, average asset turnover ratio that we've seen in the past. Average asset turnover. Yes, please. Okay. All right. Great. I, I think these are the only two questions. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Thank you. Our next question is from the line of Ages Lakhani from Unifif Capital. Please go ahead, sir. Uh, thank you, Bhubna ji. Uh, sir, question is that, uh, you know, uh, uh, European, uh, you know, clients have been wanting to diversify supply chains and they are adding another uh, 
geography to you know over a period of time to diversify this risk and in that context sir you said that china is the factory of the world and they continue to have a uh, lot of advantages from a cost perspective so could you just contextualize uh, the truth around this can i do what uh, sir uh, i wanted to know your thoughts around this Sir, I think the uh, trend is uh, continuing, and there's no change. I mean, no change. The developed uh, developed countries do not want to compromise with the environment and uh, the human health uh, health factors and issues. So they prefer to buy the goods uh, from China. In fact, many of the multinational companies are setting up joint ventures in China to share the. cost and other things so the trend is continuing i don't see any reversal in this trend yeah, in the near future or even uh, in the far future okay sir thanks so much thank you our next question is from the line of ronak cheda from ergis capital please go ahead sir uh, hello uh, hi gogna ji good afternoon Uh, I have uh, two questions. The uh, first question is on your comments you have made in the earlier calls, where you mentioned that some of the factories uh, have shut their units uh, just to uh, manage their cost. Uh, can you provide an update on what is happening there uh, in terms of are these capacities gone out for good, or uh, there is a chance that these capacities will make a comeback once the prices are less and improve? Sir, I, if I, I, I am not uh, understood and heard your question very clearly, but probably you are asking me that many of the manufacturers have shut down their uh, factories in the past, and yes, sir, yes, sir, and and are these factories and, coming back? And, and listen, let me. They are not happy with that situation. They are waiting for any opportunity they can they can restart. Because the investments are lying idle, and there are a lot of uh, fixed costs which they have to incur even if the factory is closed. So they wait for any opportunity. If we can restart, maybe less margins, but at least they can recover their expenses and costs. Sir, in that sense, then uh, do you see a longer recovery for prices to come back? Because right now demand is equal to supply. and if the demand were to increase when these factories were to come back uh, uh, there would be a very uh, very low likelihood of prices coming back no, sir yes uh, because of these factors the prices to go up to the level which existed before uh, uh, the end of last financial year it will take time mainly because of these factors got it sir and sir my second question is on the cost of registration itself um so just to understand our edge in terms of cost of registration for a similar kind of registration if uh, let's say we uh, think 100 rupees uh, would there be a differential where a competitor would be at let's say 120 or 150 any color on that would be helpful sir sir again i am not your wordings are words are not very clear to me are you asking whether the cost of registration for the same product is increasing year year after year is that your question no sir my question is uh, if the cost of registration for sharda uh, is let's say 100 rupees uh, uh, would that cost be similar for our competitors or that cost would be higher or lower for our competitors just want to understand if there is differential Or any age for Sharda? See, if Sharda has registered a product in uh, 2022, and if the competitor is going to make an effort in 2024, his cost is going to be definitely higher than what Sharda has incurred in the year 2022. Have I answered your question correctly? And sir, if it was the same registration in 22, the cost would be similar for uh, to Sharda then. Because we would have teams sitting in India versus a competition. So the same product again this year, then the cost to Sharda will also be higher. Okay, okay, uh, understood, sir. Okay, thank you so much, sir, for answering my question. Thank you, sir. 
Thank you. Our next question is from the line of Rohan Gupta from Nuvama. Please go ahead, sir. Hi, sir. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, Rohan ji. Uh, sir, my question is on our uh, capex plan. So, uh, sir, when in last two years our profitability was slightly muted, you also slowed down your capex. And now this year, when you are looking at growth coming back with the margins improving, you are again looking at roughly 425 to 450 crore rupees kind of investment in capex in the distribution. So, uh, sir, uh, this uh, uh, investment actually is to drive the growth for the future right because the registration which we will do now will give us a revenue over next two to four to five years so just want to understand your thought process how you decide on the capex number and if we keep on growing in terms of revenues uh, our investment in new registration will always keep on going or uh, what kind of percentage you are comfortable in terms of uh, putting this capex for the registration Rohan ji, I think you are not uh, caught up with the figures that I gave to one of our uh, other question, questioners uh, maybe some time back. Our capex in the year ended March 22 was 415 crores. In the year yes, sir. ended March 23, it was 360 crores. But last year was the highest. Even though the business was very bad, but we have ended up spending around 420 crores in the year ended March 24. And this is not in our hand. It is a continuous process and uh, the registration is not a, a, a market uh, deal that you pay and you receive. The registration process is very long. Sometimes it takes me seven, eight years to register a product. So I cannot stop in between. If I stop, then uh, I'll be still much worse off. So it's and there are many things. I mean, totally, it's not an uh, it's it, it, it's not a predictable expenditure because the authorities keep on coming with newer and newer requirement every three months or six months. You cannot say that why have you brought it now? I have started three years back. So things are not in our control. If we want to grow, we have to keep on spending uh, on the registration and it cannot be directly linked to the performance of any particular year. Okay, so sir, I was just trying to understand if we link it with the revenues, like, you know, uh, how much of your five, uh, 10%, 12, because now it has gone up to roughly close to 12% to 15% of our revenues. Uh, or even in terms of EBITDA, almost 60, 50 to 60 percent of our EBITDA we are spending on registration. So, do we have any any particular number in our mind that uh, that we will be stick to that number or follow a metric uh, for any future? Uh, uh, I mean, uh, uh, that's what I wanted to know. Sir, my answer is again very clear. It is not linked to revenue and it cannot be linked to revenue. It is a continuous process and uh, revenues may vary, uh, be very variant, but the registration process cannot be stopped. If I stop, then I have to forego all the costs that I have incurred on that registration till that day, which is also uh, not very good and advisable. Right, sir. Uh, sir, uh, in terms of uh, the pricing scenario, uh, so you have seen that uh, the, definitely the, some of the chemical plants in China are still shut, but definitely at any opportunity you mentioned, they will come back. So you see that the, the pricing scenario in China and of the chemical which you buy will still remain muted for uh, near term or maybe for this year and for next year as well? It will. Uh, it, it, it depends on so many factors. So it will uh, take time for the prices to go up because manufacturers are very keen to restart their plant. They do not want to lose the uh, market share that they are having. And uh, uh, it's a, then it's a question of uh, supply and demand. 
if the supply is uh, in abundance then the prices will not go up you understand me yes sir so you are saying the prices may remain because the supplies are still there so prices may remain softer only near term but uh, this this situation is also very normal many people are still suffering and very uncomfortable with the current situation so these things will uh, definitely have to improve and they will uh, sir uh, many specialty hello, chemicals hello, sir, player sorry to interrupt sir yes sir so please join the question queue for follow up yeah yeah no problem thank you thank you thank you thank you our next question is from the line of anuj sharma from m3 investments please go ahead sir yeah thank you and congratulations uh, sir just in terms of the molecules what could be the contribution of uh, the top 10 molecules uh, to the agri revenues today sir your voice is very faint and not audible i am okay. i'm make, i can guess what the question could be but can you make it little more clear and louder yes yeah, sir so uh, what i was asking is uh, can you share the reven- the contribution of top 10 molecules to the agri revenues yes sir the top 10 molecules are contributing about 35 to 40% of our total revenue and so the next question is if i look here look at 5 years ago how many of these Ten molecules would have been there five years ago in our in our list. So what has been? The Maybe there were not so many of them were not there. And I, what is your name, Mr. Uh, Mr. Anu Sharma? Yes. See, uh, our top ten molecules do not remain in the list of top ten every year. They keep on going in and going out. some uh, some molecules which may be in the number 2 position may go down to number 8 position and some other molecules which were in 22 position will come down to number 4 position depending again on the weather the demands and market situation yeah sure got it uh, sir second question is on the non agro revenues please louder please louder yeah yeah i'll sorry for that uh, my question next question was on the non agri revenues how do you see that segment shake up shaping up in the next 3 5 years uh, what confidence are you getting in that business model and how do you see that improving or how do you see that going ahead thank you we are very optimistic and uh, we are hopeful that things will improve in fact in the last year when uh, the egg business was uh, doing so badly it is a non egg business which helped and supported us in terms of revenue margins and profitability last year this uh, non egg business was giving much better margins than the egg business which is uh, depending upon the registrations all right that's helpful thank you so much for that thank you thank you ladies and gentlemen that was the last question for the day i now in the conference over to management for closing comments well i thank you everyone for joining us for this call i hope we have been able to answer all your queries we look forward to such a interaction in the future we hope to meet your expectation in the future too in case you require any further details you may contact us or mr devendra from sda our investor investor relationship partners thank you so much have a nice day thank you on behalf of antique stock broking that concludes this conference thank you for joining us and you may now disconnect your lines thank you